गाइज माई नेम इज अंकुश कौरव एंड आई वेलकम यू टू गॉन टू सीरीज इन द प्रीवियस ट्यूटोरियल्स वी लर्न ऑल अबाउट डेटा बाइनिंग फीचर्स विच आर सपोर्टेड बाई स्प्रिंग एम एस सी फ्रेमवर्क नॉन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी गैन लर्न समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड एडवांस रिलेटेड टू डेटा बाइनिंग एंड दैट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फॉर्म वैलिडेशन guys let me give you a brief summary about this ultra simple demo application which i created step by step along with you in all the previous tutorials and later i would explain every single concept related to form validations in detail for this demo application when the user would type this url on the browser the application is going to send this admission form back as a response let's say the user has provided these values in this form now when the user would uh, submit this form to my application by clicking on the submit button the request would reach to this request handler method and here this model attribute annotation would automatically bind all these form elements values with the corresponding properties of student object and while performing this data binding task if any data binding related error occurs then spring msc framework is going to catch all those errors appropriately and put all of them into this binding result reference immediately after performing the data binding task this request handler method will check if any data binding related error has occurred or not by checking this result reference and if it doesn't find any error in this result reference then it's going to send the admission success web page back to the client as a response which would display all submitted form values but if it finds any error in this result reference then it's going to send the same admission form with the complete description of all errors back to the client as a response so if everything goes fine on the server while performing data binding task for this form then i would get this success web page which would display all submitted form values but if anything goes wrong on the server while performing data binding task for this form say in this case then i would get the same admission form back along with the complete description of the data binding error which occurred on the server with this error message spring msc framework is saying to the user hey user you provided a value s for student mobile field and while i was performing data binding task for student mobile property which is having a long type i threw an error because we cannot convert a non numeric value into a long type and that resulted me sending the same admission form back with the complete description of that data binding related error guys this whole workflow which i just explained to you in a very short manner i explained in detail in all the previous tutorials now let's proceed further and learn something called as form validations let's say in this same application i have a requirement like this what i want is whatever value user would provide here for student hobby field that value should have a minimum length of 2 characters and that value should never exceed more than 30 characters and if user violates this form validation rule while providing value for student hobby field and submit the form to my application then in that case my application should return back the same admission form with the complete description of that form validation rule back to the client as a response so how we would achieve such a thing spring mvc framework says hey developers you can achieve all such form validations very easily in your spring mvc project with the help of annotations and for this form validation you simply need to put something called as size annotation on top of student hobby field and that's it with this annotation on top of student hobby field you are simply conveying a message hey spring mvc framework whenever you are performing data mining task for student hobby field and the value which you are binding with it is having a length less than 2 or more than 30 then you simply 
treat that as data binding related error and put that error into this binding result reference because we have to make one more change over here in order to activate or enable this annotation we need to place valid annotation along with model attribute annotation in this method argument so what exactly is the purpose of this valid annotation which i've kept here with model attribute annotation in this method argument with this annotation i'm simply instructing spring mvc framework his spring mvc framework whenever you are performing data binding task for this student object it's only that time you consider all those form validation related annotations which you have kept in the student class so the idea is very clear if i keep valid annotation along with model attribute annotation here for the student object it's only then spring mvc framework is going to consider the size annotation which i've kept on top of student hobby if i don't place valid annotation here then spring mvc framework will completely ignore size annotation which i've kept in this class so after these simple changes which i made in this uh, demo application let me take you to the browser to show you this application running but wait i cannot take you directly to the browser unless and until i would resolve the errors which eclipse id is displaying for valid annotation and for size annotation it's simply saying it's not able to resolve what is size and what is valid annotation so what exactly is the matter spring mvc says hey developers if you want to make use of size annotation in your spring mvc project or valid annotation or any other annotation which is related to bean validation in your spring mvc project like not null future past etc etc then in that case you will need to include a third party library in your spring mvc project which says that it has implemented something called as JSR 303 or JSR 349 specifications like Hibernate validator library, Apache Bean validator library, etc. etc. Guys, JSR stands for Java Specification Request, which are a set of standards which are provided by community called as JCP, Java Community Process. This community has given out two standards which are related to bean validation with the name JSR 303, JSR 349. Spring MC says, I support any library provided by any vendor in this entire globe which says that it has implemented any of these two specifications. So the idea is very clear. If you want to make use of uh, size annotation, valid annotation, not null annotation, future or past annotations, you know, or any annotation, which is related to bean validation then you have to include a library which says that it has implemented jsr 303 or jsr 349 specifications guys hibernate validator library is one of the most popular libraries which developers use around the globe with spring mvc project for all bean validation related things here in this demo, I've too decided to go ahead with Hibernate Validator Library. And for that, I've already downloaded all related jars from Hibernate Validator website into my local machine. These are all the jars which I would need for using Hibernate Validator Library. Copy these jars and place all of them into the lib folder of your Spring MVC project. Cool! After including these jars in my Spring MVC demo project, all errors have gone away, which earlier Eclipse ID was displaying for size annotation and the valid annotation. So all changes have been done, all related jars have been included in this demo project. Now let's see this working on the browser after all these modifications. So after all these modifications, my expectation is if I place here a value which is having a length between 2 and 30, then the application should process the form without complaining for anything, which would happen in this case. 
because the length is 5 which is in between 2 and 30 let's see cool the application processed the form happily and sent back this success web page now let's see what happens if I provide here a value having a length of one character cool the application responded as per my expectation it sent back the same admission form with a complete description of the form validation rule which I violated while providing the value for student hobby field similarly if I provide here a value having a length of more than 30 characters in that case too it's gonna respond in the same way as it responded just now when I entered a value having a length of one character guys in the next tutorial we're gonna look at some more advanced level concepts related to form validation and along with that we'll also look at some more annotations related to it guys a big thank you for liking all of my tutorials on spring MVC series if you have any comments or feedback please provide them below the video or simply write to me on this email ID for all of your queries please hit the like button if you really like the video and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Con2Series and I'm gonna catch you in my next tutorial.